All right, the skier gods take eight. One, two, three, four. Shit. All right, that's cool. Only cool guys do stuff like that. Hey, this is Pustulus Maximus of Gwar, and you're geeking out to gear gods. Well, thanks for watching, so let's just jump right into this thing, shall we? Come over here and check this out. As you can see, I like Marshalls. I really think that's just the only, the only way a guitar should sound. Well, take that back. That's the only way I should sound. No, there's nothing wrong with other amplifiers. There's plenty of good ones out there. This is just, uh, this is just what I like. So, uh, my tone is relatively simple. Guitar into an overdrive into the front of a Marshall. Um, you know, on this tour, I've been using a couple uh, JCM 800s. I've been really happy with those. I like a JMP as well. You know, an old non-master non volume cranked up. But, uh, you know, let's just start from the bottom on these and work our way up. So if you check out this bottom one here, this is a 2204 from 1987. Um, I've actually, I have another one from the exact same year that's fabled to have belonged to Ace Freely from KISS. I got it from a guy at Kiss Army. That's what he says. He says he can't prove it. I can't prove it either. So I really like the way it sounded, so I've cloned this one. There was It's not too dissimilar from a stock one. It really just had a couple resistor values that drifted, nothing major. Uh, I guess it's also worth noting it's got classic tone, output and power transformers in there, and uh, an effects loop from Metro Amp. Same thing for up here. It's got all stock transformers. It's got the same effects loop I installed from Metro Amp. This is a 2203 reissue. Um, I actually took the stock loop out. I did not like it one bit, but no mods to that one other than the loop. And uh, yeah, the reissue, I've got an original from 1982. Um, I've got a couple of them actually. They sound faithful to the originals. The circuits are exactly the same. So I wouldn't let anybody tell you they sound any different. They don't. They sound identical to the originals, the OGs. So, uh, yeah, my tone, like really, like I said, it's guitar into an overdrive into the front of the amp. So this is the main overdrive I'm using currently, uh, an MXR Distortion 3. I change them up all the time. If you want to peek a little further in there, you'll see I've got a couple green stomp boxes. I've got a Shinjuku drive from MXR. Way in the back, I've got an Ibanez TS9 Tube Screamer. And even over here, uh, this yellow one in the back, you know, course a, a boss sd1 you can't go wrong with any of these choices i tell you i like playing with different tones all the time so i change them up every other show maybe every week i'll come home and want something different maybe i'll play a different guitar and i want to switch them out even maybe in the middle of the show so sometimes i'll have more than one kind of in a in series and i'll turn them on and off kind of as i as i feel like it you know there's nothing wrong with keeping the same sound. There's nothing wrong with changing it up. It's just uh, I like to keep things interesting. I, I'm never set on the same thing for a long time, except for, I'd say, maybe the, the meat and potatoes, the amps. I haven't changed my amps in 10, 15 years. Jumping around a little bit, if you go up here to this Marshall JMP-1, this is actually what I use for uh, clean tones. So if you notice... Um, all my pedals and my rack gear here, um, they're all controlled by this Voodoo Lab GCX audio switcher, which is pretty cool. So that way I've got all the different pedals, everything's hooked up and on all the time, but it's never in the loop until I call for it through this loop switcher. So it's a, it's a genius device. I mean, so that way I can keep all my effects, you know, my Harmonist PS6, Carbon Copy, I can keep them all on but they're never in the loop until I press the button. It's a, it's a wonderful thing here. So um, that being said, I use this. I've got it routed so after the effects send from the amp, it meets up with this guy somewhere in there. And uh, so I can go between using this and the preamp of the 800, or this becomes my preamp when I run cleans, and then once I'm using this, this the 800s actually just become power amps at that point. You know, like I said, jumping around, reason I got two of them 
is one of them is usually running to a dummy load, maybe a PDI-03 like I have up here. Um, these are speaker simulators from Palmer. Pretty cool stuff. I'm not thrilled about the way they sound through my in-ear monitors. So really, I'm, use, I'm sending one of those to everyone else. So every day, if I run my stage volume super loud one night or quiet the next, well, it's never that quiet. It, it's not messing with everybody else's in-ear mix. You know, that's pretty much all I'm doing with the Palmers. Uh, when I'm running live, what I've got going through my ears is my stage volume, uh, which is pretty much coming off of this top head here, the 100 watt, and uh, I throw an SM57 in front of a Marshall cabinet. We want to jump up here to this uh, Sennheiser. That's the wireless units we use. Um, it's got my little name up there. Look at that. Pustulous. You know, uh, runs from that into a Peterson Strobo rack. I don't know how I ever lived with this thing until I got it. It's probably one of the greatest tuners I've ever used. Um, hands down the best. I'll, I'll, I can't, this is the one item I can't leave home without. Uh, that goes, of course, into a Crybaby custom shop. This is kind of like what they call like a rack wah. And basically what it does is... I can set up multiple wah controllers all around the stage and none of them actually carry signal. The wah itself is in the unit and I use it. It's pretty simple. I've got it on 2.2 K Hertz is the sweep. The Q is almost all the way up. I don't use really any boost. I think I might have this thing tweaked a hair. I don't use any of the EQ on it. I've tried it out. Really. I just have it pretty close to my stock. Um, 95 Q crybaby. I've got a pink one that I've had forever. So I've kind of tried to get it pretty close to that. You know, I've got an ISP decimator here in the rack. This one's actually off right now. I've just subbed it out for the pedal. Um, this is an older G string unit. Um, I like them both. Um, I'm chasing down a bunch of noise issues at the moment and not that there was anything wrong with this. I just, uh, it's too many, too many wires. So I just took it out. I actually have a stereo mod one that I used to use when I used angles, but this is the stock. This is just the regular one. Harmonist PS6. I really only used that uh, at the beginning of Let Us Slay, maybe in a solo section for Swallow the Sun. Um, you know, all my solos, pretty much I'm running a uh, MXR carbon copy delay. This goes right into a microamp for a boost. Um, I, if you look at the knob, I don't have it up very much. It's just enough to kind of for the, you know, to jump above the rhythm just a little bit. I'll let the sound man take care of the rest, but, you know, that's just to give me a little bit extra. Like I said, it's not crazy. And that course there, that course is really only in the signal when I'm using the clean channel on the JMP-1. It's not in my main rhythm tone. Um, I've done a few tours where I've had an analog course as part of my main sound, but haven't been doing that lately. I really only did that... Uh, when I was doing a lot of guitar work by myself, when uh, Ball Sack the Jaws of Death was out reaping and destroying and could not have a tour with us. So now he's back, I'm just gone back to my roots. I guess further back in there, there's one last thing I left out. Um, I do have a MXR flange in there, basically set exactly how EVH set his. Uh, I got it taped down so I don't screw with the knobs because I've messed with that a bunch. And the radial Twin City ABY, this thing's always been a mainstay. I love the radial stuff. If you want to zoom in on this pedal board, I've actually wired this thing so that it takes phantom power. Now, the Voodoo Lab GCX sends, I think, like nine or so volts down pins one and five. I've actually taken this thing apart, pulled the transformer out of it, put it in another box, and mounted it so I could send phantom down the two unused uh, wires in a five pin MIDI cable because MIDI only five pin MIDI only uses the middle three for uh, you know I guess it's MIDI notes signals and things like that so if you check this out if I unplug this it's out it's off if I plug it back in it comes back on so the power is being carried through five pin MIDI that's something you don't see every day. Five pin MIDI with Phantom. Yeah. And there's the Watt controller. i you actually check this one out. This is the Watt controller. This is the one we always put downstage. 
I have to wrap them in plastic, otherwise the blood of my enemies gets in there and destroys it. So I probably got about a dozen of those because they're constantly being cracked. And let me take you to the vault. This is one of my favorite pieces, of course. It's got all the guitars in it. Now, I tell you, this is, I like Dean's. I really like the fact they have a lot of specs based off of like, you know, Les Paul's 24 and three quarter scale maple tops with mahogany bodies. I like the necks, um, you know, 22 frets. I don't need anything too fancy. I've got a couple with 24, but none I've taken on this tour. Of course, you know, you start off with this guy. You know, I, I've got a DiMarzio X2 in the bridge there. You know, regular Duncan 59, I think. I couldn't, I couldn't pass it up. I had to do that as a, uh, I played that at a Vinnie Paul tribute in Sacramento. You know, so my main one on the last tour that we just did is this guy here. This is an ML79. Now, nothing fancy. I actually did these solder weird things myself. It's just got Lindy Fralin custom wines in there. Lindy Fralin's actually right up the street, makes great pickups. And right before I left on this last tour, I just sanded down the neck. And I went down to bare wood on this one. It feels really good. I've been uh, really happy with the way it performs. This one used to be my main. Once I uh, sanded the paint off the back of the neck of this one, this quickly became the backup. Again, Lindy Fralins, both of them, custom wines. The only difference between this one and that one, I think uh, that one has Alnico 6s. This one has two Alnico 6s and one ceramic. It's actually got three magnets in the, in the bridge pickup. Pretty cool. This, this is the real deal. I just got this one from Dean a few days ago. This is custom all the way. And they knocked it out of the park with this one, let me tell you. I had to take them the skin of an actual crocodile and they laid it over the guitar. It looks like paint, but I'm pretty sure it's the real one I gave them. We got shark fin inlays. Look, you gotta zoom in on this thing, man. Check this out. They even did fret edge binding on this guy. They're not bare clawed. I know a lot about guitars. This is this is the deal. This is this is the real deal. I love this thing. It's beautiful, it sounds great, you know. Got a reverse six, reverse straight six headstock. No truss rod cover. I kind of hate them. I always lose them anyway. I don't want them in there. I don't want the screw hole. I think it looks good just like that. We got body binding. The pickups are a secret. I'll tell you later. And of course, I like to feel like I'm holding a real piece of wood. So, I mean, even the grain of the mahogany they chose was really nice. Really nice wood filler, really nice finish. Um, very happy with this one. Can't say enough great things about it. So thanks to the guys at Dean for hooking it up. You guys knocked it out the park and, uh, Hey, let's go check them out. Let's listen to them. <laughs> 